Question number five, Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order. Order. I want to hear Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance and asks. Does he agree with the findings of the Savings Working Group, which found that the favourable tax treatment of property investment accounted for about 50 per cent of house price increases from 2001 to 2007? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, uh, yes, to some extent we did agree with them. It's likely it was a contributing factor, and that is why we moved to increase the effective tax rate on property uh, investors by reducing depreciation deductions, adjusting the LAQC rules, tightening working for families definitions to exclude losses on property investment, reducing the top tax rate, which significantly reduces the value of losses that they can claim and therefore tax they can get back, and giving increased funding to IRD to target property speculators who are avoiding property tax. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. D does he Order. Order. Please, both front benches. I'd ask them to show some courtesy. Now. Yeah, another sup, I think, uh, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Order. 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 The House will settle. Order. The, uh, we won't have any more interjections, uh, even though they might be helpful like that. But. I ask both front benches, please, that's unacceptable to continue interjecting, and, and, and both members are doing it in blatant fashion. Uh, Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the Minister uh, disagree then with the recommendations from the Savings Working Group, Treasury, the OECD, that have all found in favour of a capital gains tax and the, and the IMF in order to put downward pressure on house prices? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, uh, yes, we did disagree with the recommendations. If we'd agreed with them, we would have implemented a comprehensive capital gains tax. Uh, but I'd have to say the house prices are flat or falling generally, and that is going to assist with the rebalancing of this economy towards a focus on exports, uh, investment and savings and away from excessive property speculation. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Why does the minister continue to insist that a capital gains tax would be too complicated when they can manage it in the United States, China, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Poland, Singapore, Sweden, Switzerland, the UK, Japan, and, and even the Australians can do it? So what is he implying about New Zealand, that it's too complicated for New Zealand? The Honourable Bill English. That's it. Order. The Honourable Bill English. Don't, don't tempt me. <laughs> Order. Mr Speaker, the, the Tax Working Group looked at capital gains taxes as they operate in all those jurisdictions and on balance actually decided not to recommend in favour of a capital gains tax. The other, sec the other significant reason is that actually it doesn't raise much revenue in the shorter term. As I said, it could take... Even the proposal we've heard could take up to 15 years to raise $700 million worth of revenue, and when the market is flat or falling, it could possibly raise no revenue at all. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, with reference to the flat housing market, does he agree with Fran O'Sullivan, who recently said that now is the best time to introduce a capital gains tax when house values are relatively static? and that it's quite, quite simply a nonsense to continue to run a system which protects the asset rich. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, I think the reason she's advocating that is because, right, if for the foreseeable future the readers of the New Zealand Herald wouldn't be paying any capital gains tax because there is no capital gain. And that is a problem for a party who are proposing it as a way of paying for other very expensive promises. This tax would raise almost no revenue. They'd have to find some other way to pay for several billion dollars worth of, prom several billion dollars worth of promises. Question number six, Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, to the Minister of Finance. Does he agree with the OECD, who found in April this year that New Zealand is one of the few OECD countries with no comprehensive capital gains tax on any asset class, 
and that this favourable tax treatment of housing should be removed to lower house prices, prices, lower wealth inequalities and level the playing field for saving and investment decisions? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, uh, we do agree with them that New Zealand has no comprehensive capital gains tax. Uh, and generally, we agree with their objectives, and we have chosen other means to achieve those objectives. Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does he agree with John Wally from the New Zealand Manufacturers and Exporters Association? Order. Definitely an extra supplement. No, no order. The uh, Dr. Russell Norman. Does he agree with John Wally from the New Zealand Manufacturers and Exporters Association, who said recently, "quote." A balanced tax system, including taxation on property, is needed so that capital is used to invest in revenue and job generating businesses. If so, why does he continue with a tax system which has this bias for housing speculation? The Honourable Bill English. Mr. Speaker, I do remember agreeing with him once. <laughs> Look, the, um, we, we share with uh, Mr. Wally the objective of moving this economy to an export orientated. Uh, economy built on higher savings and high quality investment and high productivity. And the government has taken a number of very significant measures to achieve that, including major tax reform. In that context, we made the decision that there were other, other means of achieving a correction in the taxation of property uh, other than a capital gains tax. And as I said, the big problem here is for the opposition to come up with a high enough rate of capital gains tax covering a broad enough base to pay for the very expensive other promises that they've made. Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Why does the minister reject uh, the advice from the tax working group that a, a capital gains tax excluding the family home would raise $4.5 billion a year, which was in their report, whereas, on the other hand, he's willing to accept their advice that a capital gains tax is too complicated? Why does he not accept their number, four and a half billion, but he's happy to accept their recommendation not to proceed? The Honourable Bill English. Oh, well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, with respect to their number, as I understand it, that was based on what you call an accrual regime, which means that any any uplift in value uh, is taxed each year, regardless of whether you've sold the property or not. A realisation-based tax, which is when you pay when you've actually got the money. Uh, would realise quite a lot less money. And the, the group most harshly affected by the regime that the Labor Party are proposing are superannuitants who have low cash incomes but would have to come up with tax to pay accrued capital gains. The only saving grace is that in current conditions there's almost no capital gain, so they wouldn't have to pay, but it means the Labor Party will get no, ex no revenue from it. Commentary. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Why is he ignoring the advice of the OECD, Treasury, the IMF and the Savings Working Group that have all found that New Zealand is now an outlier in not having a comprehensive tax on capital gains, the absence of which seriously undermines government revenue and the competitiveness of our productive sector, which he has repeatedly said is central to his economic strategy? The Hon. Bill English. Well, I'm, Mr Speaker, I'm pleased to see the Greens are now starting to take notice of mainstream economic advice. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, it's taken a while. I hadn't expected, him to be, expected the Greens to be quoting the Treasury and the IMF at us, but there you go. As I said, Mr Speaker, we share their objectives, but we found different means of achieving them. Question number seven, the Honourable David Parker. Uh, my